Good morning everybody, welcome to Mortal Gaming, this is me again Marvin and we're now here for another video for Ragnarok Origin and this time we're going to be talking about the priest. Alright, for those of you who likes to support, to heal and resurrect, this is the job for you. Alright, so we're going to be talking about three builds of a priest. Particularly, I think all of those builds will be used up in your journey in becoming a priest. The first one would be the battle priest. Let's talk about the stats, of course. The stats would be the same, all agility, because you need attack speed. All you're gonna do is just whack a lot of undeads and those are the monsters that you would most likely be targeting the undeads and the demon the shadow all of those monsters that are weak against holy all right it's pretty much straightforward on stats i think the higher your agility the higher your attack speed the better all right next for the skills all the the only things that you would be needing to put are demon bane of course, a little bit of heal if you want. Demon Bane, of course, Blessing, level 10 of Blessing. Creolison or Angelus, it's okay. The important thing on your Priest skill set would be Mace Mastery and Holy Judgment. So Holy Judgment is going to be there and you're going to be dealing a lot of holy damage to your enemy. So it's always better for you to target undead enemies. And of course, Aspersio and Gloria, if you would want to go that far. All right. Next would be your gears. The only thing that you have to think about on your gears would be your weapon, which is this one, the Golden Hammer. All right. So this one would be technically the thing for the Battle Priest. And you would not need a higher level of weapon other than this one because you'll most likely be leaving the battle priest on your early game if you can go for materials leash any accessories for your character for your grinding if you're going to be focusing as much as possible on pirate skeleton but if you are uh if it's okay with you to do less damage but to have a little bit of chance to get those precious cards like the hydra card or thara frog card then it's also better so you go either for thara frog hydra or pirate skeleton and you can now shift to skeleton worker by the time that you reach around 52 okay and you would be killing them a little bit faster because of holy judgment and aspersion all right so let's now go to the full support build the most important build in the priest job class because this is going to be needed pretty much throughout the game career <laughs> throughout your game career all right so in terms of the stats your priority is going to be having 50 dexterity 50 dexterity for faster casting of resurrection sanctuary and magnificat just in case you would have you know extra skill points for that one but basically for faster casting of resurrection because resurrect is the one that most likely would be needed from you among your party members all right next would be vitality you need to stay a little bit longer you need to survive a little bit longer because once you die your party dies all right so you wouldn't want forcing a member of the party resurrecting you using yggdrasili for seven seconds so you have to stay alive then that's the reason why vitality really comes in handy now the last thing is you would be putting the rest of your stat points into int all right so at the very beginning you could put one is to one is to one by the time that you go 40 on the three of this then you focus now on dexterity and int you put more on dexterity until it reaches 50 and the rest would be intelligence all right for the skill sets this is quite confusing and it's quite it's quite troublesome because they need a lot of you know skill points but you can only fit in so much in your character so this is the most optimized way for you to go and distribute all of those job skill points so of course level 10 this is important 10 on blessing i would be suggesting level 2 on heal and then the rest would be blessing and increase agility then go back to heal 
make it level 10, and then the rest would be Angelus and Kirielison. For the priest, the most important thing here is resurrection. So go for level 4 resurrection so that you you would be having less cast time next would be sanctuary don't max it out just five sanctuary and then you would need level 10 safety wall then after level 10 safety wall level 3 recovery and then after level 3 recovery you go and put everything on imposition manos asperso and Gloria. You can also put, depending on the party members that you're always, you know, joining or if the current Helheim dungeons or the important dungeons in-game would be needing you to convert the damage of your party members to holy property, then you would go first for Aspersio, then Gloria, and then the last would be Imposition Manus. So it still depends on your current gameplay in-game, okay? So, after the skills, we go to your current uh, gears, alright? So, the important thing on your gear is, of course, your weapon, and it would be the day staff. Straightforward, higher uh, magical attack, higher heal, and it makes your heal dependent on your magical attack. That means the higher magical attack, the higher your heal will become. So, this is also good. Also, target to have it at least plus 6, a reasonable refinement, and more magical attack. For your shield, immune shield would be best. Then, uh, Eden group uniform on level 50, and uh, group and vital 3 shoes for your shoes. For your accessories, anything that in increases your magical attack would do. But if you get lucky, then go for expert ring. For your headgears, it's still always about less cooldown, less skill cooldown, more dexterity, more int, or more vitality. In the late game, you would want more survivability rather than dexterity or int. Then, But that's in the later game. Now, let's switch to the Magnus. So for the Magnus, you wouldn't need any vitality, okay? So you would concentrate on dealing more damage and having a lower cast time. So just like a wizard, okay? Everything that we have discussed in the previous video of the wizard guide, then all you have to do is apply it to the priest all right so same in and dexterity and then for the skills we would be talking similarly on your acolyte skill set you can juggle your skill points with angelus or uh, or kiri Alison. it still depends on you for the priest of course you have to go for the resurrection line followed by the turn undead and magnus exorcismus of course you still need five sanctuary you really need particularly you yourself need safety wall and then the rest would be either for gloria for increased magical attack for aspersia and for recovery all right so for the gears the only difference here would be your secondary weapon or your shield and your weapon. So for your weapon, it should be holistic, of course, to reduce greatly the cast time of your Magnus Exorcismus. And for your shield, it would be Exorcism Bible. So let's now go to the Vero score. The Vero score also follows all of the uh, builds. We have the full support. Uh, build we have the magnus build anything that would be increasing your attack speed would be also good for the battle priest if you're still using the battle priest by the time that the vero score gets released then these are the three that would be going for that uh, bonuses on your build we have here the momentum management module we have the judgment multi-attack and the channeling judgment for the full support it's going to be Radiant Boost for Sanctuary, of course, Healing Effect for your Heal, and Heal Insignia for additional AoE Heal to your party members. Alright, so now let's go for the Magnus. Although it's still not final, we have a lot more 
for your uh, Magnus Exorcismus, we have the Magnus Exorcismus Divine Spike. Anything that increases your magical attack or dexterity would also be good in the early games. Okay? And in the latter parts of the game, Exorcism Prediction, which would be decreasing the cast time and the cooldown. Alright? So let's now go for the grinding okay after as we have already finished a while ago after skeleton worker you can now go for orc zombie when you are already free to use your uh, magnus exorcismus and then you can also go for skeleton orc skeleton around level 70 plus you could now go for the goal all right so after that of course the glass time would be your place to stay all right so that's it. I do hope that you have learned a lot from this guide. I'm really thankful for K, Kenji or Place by K, who has lent me this character, his CBT character. I am really honored to use this one. Thank you again, Place by K. I also have put his link down below so that you could also subscribe to his channel and support him. All right. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. If you happen to like this video, please do leave a like. Share this to your friends and click that bell notification button so you get notified every time I upload a new video, start a new stream, or a new content. That's it. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye!